Lili Bendris, it's an honor to have you on my show. Much, much welcome. Thank you very much. We have been talking about it for almost two years and it never happened. Now it's the time. Apparently. And we're at this conference in Bergen. Yes. And I saw you had a very um, interesting talk yesterday. It was packed and you were sitting there on stage and you started uh, speaking about your contact with beings from other planet. I, went, I was thinking that that could be our topic today because yes. I'm very fascinated by this topic and you're very famous in Norway and you're speaking a lot about this and you're revealing more and more it seems like. So it seems like maybe uh, there is time or people people are more open for it now. Do you think so? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I have had contact since I was small, didn't understand at the time. Um, and I, I never talked about it. And uh, even when I had my abrupt awakening at the age of 42, um, they came to me. And uh, I had to really question myself, am I hallucinating? What is this really? Can I trust it? Uh, and I needed to speak with other people at that time, it's 25 years ago, um, that believed the same as me. So I actually started to to take the trip over to the United States, to Las Vegas, to this UFO conferences, met many people and they look quite intelligent and they are talking about it and they are believing in it. So maybe I'm not crazy. So. I was not comfortable with it at that time to speak about it. It was my inner wisdom. It was my inner belief. And I had so many experiences that in the end I said, okay, it's enough. It's enough. I believe. And then everything disappeared um, for many, many years. It was like, yes, they was there, but I need to live my life on planet Earth. I need to do my things. And I felt like I had a guardian behind me is something more that I could I could rest in confidence with. And um, and then two years ago, they said that now is the time. Uh, the consciousness of uh, the people of planet Earth is rising and many things is happening. And there is this closure project uh, in the States right now. Many people are coming forward. Uh, talking about it and uh, there is a lot of sighting suddenly um, so now I felt that I have to reveal more I have to stand up for what I believe and not be a, a coward so if they think I'm crazy let them think I'm crazy hmm. So let's talk about this contact that you do have. How do you uh, communicate with them? Is it, uh, ha have you actually seen them physically? Or is it through your third eye? Or are you hearing them? Or how does this uh, work? It is, uh, it is an inner vision. Uh, when I meditate, uh, it's like I, I go through a tunnel with a lot of colors and I come out the other side and I come into this other worlds. And uh, let let me just say the first time that I saw something unexplainable, how it really, then as a child, seven years old, I could, um, I could have this belief that there are people from the stars visiting us because at the time, um, it was second Christmas day, and a lot of children, I was seven, were going to a kind of a feast, a Christmas feast, and uh, I, I lived at the country at that time, so we, we went alone, but there were one couple with us. And uh, this guy, he was a captain of a big ship, and he knew, the, he knew the heavens and the stars and the constellations. And as we are walking there, we, we look at this beautiful starry heaven, and right on top of a little mountain, like, you know, not a big mountain, there were this very bright star. And the children started to, to talk about this star that, wow, it's, oh, look at that star. And, and, uh, and, and the, one, the father who was with us, he looked up and he said, but there is no star there. There is not supposed to be a star there. 
And as we are watching kind of our consciousness directed towards this star, it jumps. Bah! And everybody is frozen. Wow! <laughs> what is this? And the next minute is jumping in a different direction. And I mean, it's not like this. It's really a distance. And as we are watching for the next five minutes, the star is going zigzagging down the mountainside. And this is a little village. We have one little plane there. The postmaster have a plane. And uh, this was like impossible. And all the children said, because it disappeared behind the church, and the children said, wow, maybe it's doomsday. Maybe Jesus is coming back. You know, wow, the star of Bethlehem is descending. And I was standing there and said, how stupid. This is Lynn Gordon. This is a spaceman from the stars that are visiting us. He's coming to visit. Don't they understand that? And, you know, I was seven years. How, how could I think that? But for me, that was so real. And, of course, the newspaper the next day was full of pictures and comment of the, this, this um, light formations that have been seen over the area in which we lived. So when I grew up and when I started to have my contact again, I remember this. And yeah, because there was a period in your life where you didn't, you wasn't interested in like spiritual phenomena. No, I wasn't at all. I was living in the fast lane. I was running a restaurant. I was in fashion and I was not spiritual. I, I, religion for me, it was like that. And I had a very strong, almost like a near-death experience when I was 42, where everything just exploded. And it, and uh, the power of the healing came in my hands. It was a curtain taken aside and I went into all these images and all this, at the time I said, fantasy worlds. And uh, I had never meditated. I had never read a book about this thing. So it was like I was an alien towards this topic. Mm. So I had to learn. And in the beginning, there was an old Indian sage walking by my side. He was present when I had my awakening. And uh, it was so safe. Everything was filled of love. I was writing poems. I was in this beautiful, beautiful world where my wounded eagle, as he called himself, was my companion. That was my opening to the spiritual world, the world of the spirits. He was not an alien. He was a guy that had lived, died, and came to me from the spirit world. And had a, a higher consciousness in oh, a way? Oh, yes. He was an old sage. He was a wisdom keeper. And... Uh, for many, for many years, he, he, he was really my companion. And then one day he said that, I need to leave you now. I need to leave you. There is somebody else coming in. And it was then first time I connected with my people. Mm. And um, shall I tell you about it? Yes, and I would love to hear who, I mean, I mean you're saying your people. Yeah. And I'm wondering about who are these people? Is it one planet? Is it another galaxy? Is it something specific? Or is are you saying it's more of a general term? Because, you know, um, uh, Abraham, they're saying that uh, they're just, you know, just call us Abraham. It's more general in a way. But I feel yeah. like you actually have contact with someone specific. Yeah, I have contact with somebody specific. It is me, 5,000 years ahead of our time. The future you? Yeah, the future me. <laughs> and then again, what, what is time? What mm. is time? Time is an illusion. We use time here. And when I connect with Amusar, that is my name, uh, she explained to me that her world is so different from mine and that they experience things simultaneously, that... Uh, all of me exist at the same time in many different disguises on many different planetary systems, many time epochs of planet Earth. And um, 
Is it a way your soul that's parted into different yeah. parts? Yes, it's my soul that takes different forms. It all happens simultaneously. But on Lily, with Lily's consciousness on planet Earth, look at time as a, as a future or a past or now. And she say that I'm you, you are me. And in a way, my consciousness is with Amusar because that's my... Uh, that's my uh, my personality structure is my consciousness is in that but in the same time I can visit my other selves and I connected with you because you were open for it there were emerging of our energies at a certain point where we could connect because your soul cells exist in my body and my soul cell exists in your body. We are part of the same soul cluster and uh, we are sharing memories. But I am more advanced in doing this than you. So I'm teaching you from my point of view, not because I am better, but it's like when you are in first grade at school, uh, you know less than one on the university, but you are no less human being. You are not less important. It's just that we had different education. So they are very humble. Uh, I feel that she do not have enough uh, fire in her. Everything is very harmonic. Everything is, is very orderly. Uh, and for me, I would be a little restless if I was living in her world. And she say that you need more action. That's part of your bodily form. You are more fire, you are more wind. But when we, when we are taking a trip in our automobile, we just close our eyes and our body are feeling the sensation of driving that car with the wind blowing. But our body actually do not need to do it. We are living more to our mind experience experiencing the sensations of what we do. But you have to take your physical body out into your garage, start your car, start to drive your car. Everything is in the physical body, um, is the work of the physical body. And that is reality for you. For us, it's as real, even if it happens in our mind. So their world are more still. Okay, and um, I see her very thin, slim, very tall, very beautiful. Um, it, it reminds me, you know, this this movie, uh, The Ring of the Lords, the 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 lady oh, who played the, the elf, elf, the elf, yeah. When I see Amusar, it's like it's, she's so much like this elf, except that she's much taller. And uh, and the interesting thing is that she had brown skin. And that baffled me. I said, you should have a white skin. She had brown skin and white hair. And this blue, blue, blue eyes. I, I heard somebody talking about the tall white ones. Is this the same race? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I am baffled by the color of her skin. Uh, but I have seen others and they are quite pale they're also very tall and where are they from and are there different planets are there different systems there are millions millions of systems million of worlds mm. uh, that have intelligent life um, and for me when i say my people it is on from the andromeda galaxy and not so many talk uh, about w- where is that uh, compared it is to the, Earth? yeah it, it is the nearest galaxy to our galaxy, like two million light years away. And they say that we do not need to travel in a ship of steel. We travel through our consciousness. And when you think of us and you call on us, we will be there like a blink of an eye because there is no distance for us. We travel through our consciousness and it made sense for me uh, because when you dream, I dream I, I am going to Hawaii, I, I am at Hawaii. There is no distance. I am there immediately mm-hmm. when my thought reflects that idea. Mm-hmm. So that is how they travel through their consciousness. And they travel in their light bodies in a way and a cluster of beings create a light ship. 
and they can maneuver that light ship. They can change its molecules, and um, and for us, it's like, how can I do this? There are laws. I am not a technical person, and I'm not advanced in science. So when they speak to me, it's like speaking to a child. They simply make it very simple. Like I told you now, they said, this is the way we do it. And then they started to teach me about anti-gravity propulsion and that. I said, whoa, 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 this, forget about it. Yeah, too much. Uh, it, it's too much. It's yeah. too much. So, so how do they live there? I mean, what do they do in their everyday lives? They, they create. They create all the time. They said that it's the creative life force that always have a need to express themselves to create. So it's like when I was taken up in um, in this huge ship. You've been in a ship? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> like what, no, was it physical? With my physical body. No, okay. Not with my physical body. I go into this like trance state, and then it's as real as I'm sitting here talking with you. Really? And I I remember the first time when I came to this world. It was like I came into a room and uh, I looked around many strange uh, beings, but they they were not like insects or creepy. They, it's like you see Star Trek, they had uh, they had different s shape on their head, but what stro uh, what was really um, hitting me very hard was the feeling, the feeling of harmony, the feeling of dignity, the feeling of being welcomed without words. They were not talking in any language to me. They were talking in my head. Everything was telepathic. And that was a bit strange. And it was a type of a music. It was a sound. Everything was very harmonic. But I felt so good. So they have music there. It was a sound like, like music. And then I look at myself. I look at my hands. And I again see this brown skin. Oh. And I see my, I have something strange on my head. And I have this long dress beautiful garment and then two children are coming running towards me like taking around my feet I'm looking down and I'm saying it's my children this is my children and it I I was choking up and it was so strong I realized in that moment that I'm living as Lily on planet earth I'm also living here because I'm not visiting from Earth. It is like I have been away for one hour, one day. Uh, so how is that possible? And it's then they start to explain me that yes, you are living simultaneous life and we are teaching you now how you can interact with your different selves. So in a way, I'm visiting myself in different worlds and uh, and another me is uh, Ataya, and she look. She have. She is bald. Have no hair, and uh, she have a neck that she showed me how she could stretch it, almost like ET. I was fascinated by how she could stretch her neck. And where does she live? She. It's it's a system that has no name. She said, what is it? Is it a known place? And she said, it would not make sense for you. It is... Another dimension? Yeah, it is absolutely a higher dimension. It's absolutely a higher dimension. It's a very different time structure. And all of these worlds have different time structures. But Ataya, she explained to me how children uh, were born in this world. They, they said that we are perfect female and we are perfect male and in your time we are children like in three four hundred years we are children and we are accessing our female side and the man it's not like we are both sexes we are very separate 
And then not many children are born here. And I say, how do you make children? How do you make children? And they said that the way we do it is that there are a man and a woman selected by the elders, by the council, that have it in them, purity, so strong that they can draw from the soul substance a new form. And they do not have intercourse as we have, hmm, I thought. But they are meditating and they are connecting with the highest grade of love, the, the source, as they call it, in a way. And they are willing a soul to come in. And it is like from nothing, there is like this, it looked like an egg, an egg shape that starts to vibrate between them. Like... Um, yeah, it's vibrating. It's like a ball of light. So they're doing it more in an uh, energetic way, yeah. in a way, in with their energy. love, yeah. or with a source of love. Yeah. Perfect love, perfect dyna- dynamic harmony. And as this egg is then kept uh, in a place, it's like everybody is looking after this egg and it has a maturing time. And when the time is ready, the clan is then... Um, sitting there in a circle, the egg in the middle. And it's, it was amazing to see this. And it is like, by the sheer thoughts, it, it's like the egg, the form is falling apart and there is a little child. And the eldest in the circle take that child and lifts it and put its forehead into their own forehead and transmit all their knowledge into this child. So the child goes around and are directly, there is a direct transmission from all of them because they have the personality and yet they have a union like one. Um, So the child is already from the first day uh, infused with knowledge from the world that the soul has awakened to. And then it is childhood again for many hundred years in our time. And, um, and it is, uh, it's like, you know, of course, sometimes I think, Lily, you have a very good fantasy. <laughs> Maybe you should write a novel about this. And in a way, it's not fantasy for me. Well, I got to say that uh, I've been uh, astral traveling out of my yeah. body. And when I did that, I felt that I, that it was just as real as in this life. Like you were saying, yeah. I could sit here in the astral realm. And then I was like, this is totally weird. Like, I can fly through walls. I can do anything. That's yeah. what we call fantasy in yeah. life. So, you know, that's made me open up much more because I've actually had an experience. Yes. Yes. But yesterday you said something that... Uh, was interesting. You said that we got to realize that we are half human and half alien. Yes. Can you speak about that? Yes. My belief, again, what they have told me is that they planted their seed and they created people that they used primitive humans and they used themselves and through experimentation, they managed to create many different races. Was that the benevolent um, beings? Yes. Yes, of course, uh, those beings were looked at as gods for those which were created. Um, And uh, And there are many drawings of this. uh, From, I mean, we've found, or people have found many drawings, like, and the pyramids and everything. There are a lot of things that we don't understand that I yes. think have something to do with this. I think that we are nearing a time where many things will be revealed and cannot be denied. Because we have a creation story and uh, we have a history, we have history books, and it is so and so and so. I think there is a different truth. That for me, that we try to make it difficult because it disturb our truth of who we are. Hmm. And the day 
when we will meet really somebody I don't think they will land on the White House lawn. I think they are working individually with the consciousness and the experiences, taking away fear. I do not say that it's paradise up there, but I have come to believe that, yes, there are forces, earth, earth-like um, worlds, where they still are working out their ego, their warfare, and have technology that they can go to distant stars. Uh, but I think that if somebody wanted to take us over all this creepy film from Hollywood to eat us and all these monsters, that would have done it a long time ago. Why wait? Mm -hmm. They could have done it, but maybe we're not so interesting for them. I think that there is a plan. I think that creation has a plan with the different worlds. And evolution is within this plan. And that the fall from grace, being kicked out of the Garden of Eden, Atlantis sinking, all of these are kind of memories of something that we had, that we had ownership to, something that were perfect and then something happened that destroyed that and we could not disappear but the plan was changed in the way that we have to kind of walk our baby steps back to realize who we truly are to grow up as a race as a humanity under free will and with the ego that we have and our need to protect ourselves because it's part of the game that we do not have that security that we are living forever we are changing form we are here and we are there so we are fighting for our form on planet earth that's our reality that's all there is heaven what is that something strange out there that we do not quite believe in a God that kind of control us and is pleased or misplaced, mm -hmm. an outside force controlling us. And that has been um, a reality for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And that when we come to the point, when enough people come to the point that we can believe that we are our, our own creators and that we can merge with that alien perfect side of ourself because they are in a way perfect they have gone the miles ahead of us and again they say but it is you it is you we are going back from the future to to help ourselves achieve being here where we are now so so this is like wow yeah i can't understand it uh but in the same time i watched back to the future the other day yeah. and he he goes back he changes things and then it yeah. changes the future yes. so it makes sense in one way but then my mind is like but it doesn't make sense and no. i'm like i just have to let it go and yeah. accept Do you think that we use like five percent of our brain yeah. what would happen if we used 30. Yeah. wow so of course um I think we are much loved by our sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. I think that they really want the best for us. I really think that they're pushing us saying, you can make it, you can make it. Mm -hmm. Take one more life. You can fix this now. Get rid of your ego. Get rid of, of your, your karmic condition that holds you imprisoned. You have to go an extra mile. Okay, but we are there every step. Mm. By the way, we are walking there with you because you are us. You are us. I just have to ask one question because all of a sudden I was thinking, but where do you think you go when you die? Will you go to another planet or? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think that when I die, because my consciousness is very locked into my family in the Andromeda galaxy. So where your consciousness are locked into, I think that is where you are taken. Mm -hmm. Because I have this belief, because I have been there, I feel that I will take the highway, 
directly back <laughs> into this world. <laughs> Because that is what I want. I loved being there. Mm. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm not afraid of dying. Mm.